gentlemen, welcome back to a quick Q&A. A viewer recently asked, I feel like I should know this, but what's the difference between a panel board and a switchboard? Aren't they the same thing? What about switch gear? So today I want to answer two questions. What, what are the key differences between panel boards, switch boards, switch gear, and MCCs? And question number two, why are these differences so important? Electrical lingo can be really complicated, especially because a lot of times we have six or seven different words for the same thing. But in this case, they are distinct things and there are very important differences between them. And these differences can have implications for workers interacting with the equipment uh, to make sure that we do it in a safe way. Uh, to start off with, these are panel boards. Sometimes also called a load center. Uh, this type of distribution panel is found everywhere from homes to offices to industrial facilities. These are most commonly used to protect and distribute power to lighting, outlets, or other pretty small loads. They're exclusively low voltage. Uh, here in the US, that means 120, 208, 240, or 480 volts. Sizes can range from 50 amps all the way up to 400-ish amps. Uh, exceptions to that, I mean, you might see bigger ones. Panel boards are typically wall-mounted, though in industry there are sometimes that you'll see them freestanding on pedestals or hanging from unistrut, things like that. In general, these contain one larger main breaker sized to protect the whole board and be big enough to carry all of the connected loads. There will be anywhere from a couple to a few dozen smaller MCBs or miniature circuit breakers uh, feeding out to each load. Though if the protection upstream is adequate and close enough, uh, some panel boards are what we call MLO panels or main lug only meaning they aren't equipped with a main breaker. The feed coming in lands directly on the main bus and the, the feeder breakers protect the downstream loads by themselves. The defining anatomy of a panel board is that behind the cover, the breakers are directly mounted to a vertical bus bar at the back of a very, fairly shallow uh, panel board enclosure. The enclosure itself will be around three to six inches deep and the bus bar will be mounted pretty much at the back of it. But again, you're only you know, six inches away from the main bus bar with that cover removed. A step larger is what we're gonna call a switchboard. You'll probably see this uh, abbreviated as SWB or MSB for main switchboard, if it's the main switchboard for a facility. These are typically found in larger commercial and industrial applications requiring more power. In general, switchboards are three phase, 208 volt or 480 volt and rated for anywhere between 600 to 2000 amps. Again, sizes will vary a little bit outside of that bigger and smaller. These can have multiple distinct vertical sections uh, with large bus bar mounted horizontally connecting between them. For modern installations, you'll often find the main section will contain one large insulated case power circuit breaker or a huge fuse disconnect switch like a Pringle switch or something like that. The other sections will have vertical bus connecting to the feeder breakers, uh, similar to a panel board. Sometimes it'll actually just look like a panel board is mounted inside the vertical section of a switchboard. Big differences between this and a panel board are that a switchboard will almost always be sitting by itself on the floor and may be accessible from the rear or the sides uh, to pull cables in and terminate up to the breakers. Quick shout out, this video is sponsored by my channel members. If you've got overtime burning a hole in your pocket, uh, consider supporting the channel and hitting the join button down below for as little as $2 a month. It just helps me buy cool stuff on eBay to uh, make tutorials out of here on the channel. Switch gear can look similar to a switchboard at first, but it's notable for having isolated cubicles for each feeder breaker or switch. These are found in heavy industry and utilities where a ton of power is getting distributed. Voltages range from 480 volts all the way up to 15 or even 35,000 volts. Typical 480 volt switch gear will have a main breaker rated for 1200 to 4000 amps with feeder breakers sized for 300 to 1200 amps, give or take. Due to the large size of switch gear assemblies and the breakers inside them, it's common to find what we call draw out circuit breakers that can easily be removed from energized bus using a, like a racking me mechanism. It's like a draw screw at the bottom that pulls the breaker off of the bus instead of having to you know, shut the whole board down and directly unbolt the breaker from the bus as we see most typically in switch boards and panel boards. I'll put some examples of medium voltage switch gear up too, as well as switch gear containing uh, manual fuse disconnect switches. All of these would be considered switch gear and not switch boards. 
since the size, voltage, and construction of these vary so much, uh, it's kind of hard to make firm rules on what switch gear actually is. But the key thing is that every breaker or switch has its own compartment, and the primary current carrying connections are at the rear of the breakers, which attach to the bus deep into the back of the enclosure. For switch gear, there will almost always be uh, rear access behind the switch gear so that feeder cables can be pulled in and landed on the termination points inside the enclosure. On medium voltage switch gear, oftentimes the cables come in into their own completely separate section. So you've got a, a cable termination enclosure at the rear of the switch gear, which is completely separated from uh, any, any bus. The other honorable mention here is MCCs or motor control centers, which share similarities, share characteristics with both switch gear and switch boards, but they're their own distinct thing. MCCs may contain a like a main section where it's got a big main uh, circuit breaker. Typically, it's a larger molded case circuit breaker, but it can be a larger insulated case or power circuit breaker. They'll typically have many, many motor control buckets, as we call them, where a smaller breaker is actually hidden inside and a separate manual disconnect switch is seen on the front of the gear for each bucket. So you've got a, a breaker doing the overcurrent protection inside that's not really accessible, and then you've got a manual disconnect switch for uh, starting and stopping the load. These can also contain uh, additional components like automatic contactors, variable frequency drives, and soft starters. Now, in a switch gear, you can rack out one large breaker from its cell. In an MCC, you can yank the entire bucket, uh, the entire enclosure, including the breaker and control components, right off of the bus. Let's get back to uh, why these names are important and why you should know the difference. Right. Primarily because you don't want to sound stupid in front of your customers and coworkers. Secondary to that is safety. Some job sites will have accurate, up-to-date arc flash studies uh, with stickers on each individual piece of gear that tell you what PPE you need to don for a certain task or working on a certain piece of equipment. Knowing my audience, uh, many of y'all aren't so lucky. <laughs> the alternative to selecting PPE based off a arc flash study sticker on the gear is using what's called the table method. So uh, NFPA table 130.7, or if you're in Canada, CSA Z462, um, they have a bunch of tables that help you pick the PPE required for your task. Now, these tables make a lot of assumptions based off of like the general ampacity and size of these types of equipment. But one assumption that varies substantially between switchgear, MCCs, switchboards, and panel boards is what we call the working distance. That's the distance between your greasy, flammable face and the energized bus. To assume the worst case scenario, uh, for most of these, table 130.7 gives you two options for working distance. So 18 inches, which is roughly arm's length for the average size guy, and 36 inches, where there's a whole large breaker between you and the bus. Site-specific arc flash studies tend to be more accurate with these assumptions and will state the working distance based on what's, what's physically installed. Uh, some switch gear has a working distance of 36 inches, some of it's 24 inches. For medium voltage gear, it could be even more than that. Most switchboards are a 24 inch working distance. Some are 18. It really depends on how large the breakers are and how far your face will be from hot components. In general, panel boards and MCCs have a working distance of about 18 inches. It should be evident that the further away from the source of an arc flash you are, the less energy you'll receive. They can put a different incident energy rating on the sticker depending on the distance you're going to be from the bus doing the task. That's something you want to keep in mind if you're just a dude with short arms. If you've got a question about uh, electrical testing or just power stuff in general, leave it in the comments. I try my best to answer all of the questions in my comments, or uh, maybe I'll turn it into a future video. Stay safe out there, and I'll see you on the next one. Thanks, guys.